Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. What we have today is a Sears two-ton floor jack. Uh, bought this sometime in the mid 80s. It is a model number 328-12160. The issue that we have is when you jack it up it goes right back down. So we've got a seal kit that we're going to install and hopefully that'll bring the jack back to a working condition. So let's get started. So the kit that we have to replace the parts came from Amazon. You can search there by your jack model number and they've got one for about everything. So the first thing we'll do is remove the handle. There is a bolt on each side of the jack. One here and one on the other side right there. The thing that we have to watch when removing them is this spring which is prone to go flying across the room if we're not careful. So I'm going to use an impact to back the two handle bolts out. Got the first one, now I'll do the second one. Once they're loose, I'll take them out the rest of the way by hand. So the next step will be to remove the four bolts that hold the two rear wheels on. There are uh, two bolts in each one, uh, either side. So we'll get those out and come back. So with the wheels off, the next step was to flip the jack over and as you can see there's a spring that attaches the base of the power unit to the uh, body of the jack. So we'll need to remove that spring. It just flips off that peg. There's also a cotter pin you can see there that needs to come out. So I'm just going to use a pair of side cutters to lift that spring up off of that peg. Grab it and lift and she's off. And then we'll squeeze the cotter pin back together and pull it out from the other side. So with the spring off and the cotter pin removed, all that remains is to pull the power unit out of the jack. So before we begin disassembly, we need to get the oil out of the uh, power unit. This plug is what holds it in. So we'll just take a pair of needle nose pliers and pop that out. Now we should be able to drain the oil into uh, the measuring cup that I've got there and probably spill a little bit trying to get it there. So I drained approximately 8 ounces of oil out of the jack. So for the next step we need to remove the cap. And to do that we're going to need our old friend Mr. Pipe Wrench. Break that loose and then twist it off so that we can get the piston out and start replacing the seals. So with the cap broken loose we no longer need the unit in the vise. We'll just finish screwing it off and pull the piston out of the cylinder. Uh, yeah. As you can see, that seal is worn out. Okay, so to remove the seal, we first remove the snap ring. After the snap ring is removed, you can slide the seal off of the piston. Select the correct yeah, seal from your kit, match it against your old seal to be certain, to and then slide it onto the piston. After reinstalling the snap ring, you're ready to put the piston back into the cylinder. Start it in by gently rocking back and forth, and when it gets to about this point, you can stop. Next, we'll replace the seal inside the cap. I place the cap upside down on the vise. So, using a screwdriver placed against the edge of the seal and a small hammer, I begin tapping around the sides and do this on both sides to keep the pressure equal until the seal is forced out of the cap. It may take a few uh, times around, but eventually it will pop out. Fell out and straight into the trash can. Couldn't do that again. All right. So, so we'll set the new seal, the new in, seal place. In. Just set it in place. And then and using use a inch and a quarter, inch and quarter socket. socket so that we don't so damage anything, down. we will gently tap seal the seal down, down into place. That's the way. Using a pick, we will remove the o-ring from the side of the cap. Then we will select the correct replacement from our kit and reinstall it. Very careful not to roll it into place. I also want to get a little oil on it so it doesn't go in dry. So with the power unit clamped back into the vise, it's time to reinstall the cap. So we'll simply screw that down as far as we can by hand. 
and then we're going to reach a point where we have to bring out the pipe wrench again to finish the job. So after getting it as tight as I could by hand, I flipped it over in the vise so I could get a better bite on it with the pipe wrench. And we'll snug it down as much as we can. The next step will be to replace the seal for the plunger. This seal will pop out very easily with a screwdriver. Uh, sorry about the camera jumping around. So locate the seal from your kit, put it in place, and find a socket that will fit on top of it and use that with a hammer to tap it into place. After the seal is firmly installed, reinstall the plunger. Prior to reinstalling the power unit, I put a little bit of grease into the cup that the piston rides in. I don't know that it's necessary, but it's not going to hurt. So now we're ready to reinstall the power unit. Slide the tip of the power unit into the cup on the jack body. Be careful to line the hole in the power unit up with the hole for the cotter pin. When you've got it in place, just lay the uh, unit down into the jack. I'm using the old cotter key just to line the piston up with the hole and once everything's assembled I'll replace that with a new pin. Reattach the spring to the pin. The next step is to carefully turn the jack on its side and begin reinstalling the wheels. All right, so starting the bolts by hand, make sure that the longer bolt goes into the power unit. Then use an impact to finish tightening the bolts. Same thing on the other side. So now we're installing the handle. I started this bolt just finger tight to hold everything in place. You notice that the plunger rides on this little pin in the handle. Okay, before we uh, finish this, hopefully you can see what I've done here. The, uh, the easiest way apparently to do this is to run the spring up so that th this is in the hole back here instead of up against the back of the handle. So there's no pressure on it while we're running the bolt in. And then hopefully we'll just be able to grab hold of the spring and pull it back up here where it needs to be on this, this side of this lip that holds it in place. You can see the uh, witness mark where it was at before. So sounds great in theory. We'll see how it works out. Well, I definitely could not, I definitely could not have done that one handed, but it did work pretty much like I uh, thought it would. What I had to do was take a screwdriver and push it over a little bit so that it would clear this bump down here. And once it was past that, just grab the body with some needle nose pliers, pulled it up out of there and up over the top. And just slid this over a wee bit and spring is in place. So we're good to go. So I need to finish tightening these two bolts and put some fluid in it. So I found that a cheap turkey baster will fit that fill hole really well and you can add oil without spilling it all over the cylinder which is prone to happen while you try to get that big bottle down there and get the little spout that they give you in that hole. So we'll just go ahead and fill it up. It's probably going to hold about uh, 8 to 10 ounces and then we'll put the plug back in it and test it out. So we're full of oil, the plug's back in, and I've got it under the front of a riding lawnmower because it's cold and raining outside. So first thing we got to do is bleed the air out. We open the valve, pump it about six times, and then we'll close the valve, and hopefully we're going up. Looks good so far. We'll take it up and see if it holds. Previously, this would have been back on the floor, so we've apparently solved the problem. So if you enjoyed the video, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe if you'd like, and as always, thanks for watching.